Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting of July 17th at 6 p.m. This is a hybrid Zoom um, in-person meeting. The meeting will be held in the hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and hearing will not be suspended or ter terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific, specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be held in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Okay, I'm calling this to order. Um, we have public comment. Is there any public comment before we start? All right. Um, we have appearance uh, for the Leary lot tonight. And um, do we have, we have Berkshire Design? Yep, Jeff, Jeff's okay. here. Jeff's Jeff, quiet. why don't you come up? There's no one, is there anyone from your um, office on? Not online, no. Oh, okay. Uh, no. Okay. Welcome. Uh, great. Thank you. Um, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group. Thank you again for uh, having me back. And um, so, yeah, so basically just an update as to where we are and, and what I'll show you tonight. Um, but the um, our field survey for some of the additional information that we need to pick up um, has been complete. We've got a little bit of office work to do still to finalize, the drafting, but um, I think all the field work is done. Um, we've developed a number of um, three different schemes tonight um, to look at and review with you all, um, and um, we'll uh, go through those. Those very, um, really, the driving factor in in this, as you might imagine, is the number of spaces that you ultimately decide you need. Yeah. Um, you know, I think. Um, uh, we can talk through, you know, the implications of, you know, more spaces versus less and where that, you know, is lost, obviously, with, with some of the green space. But um, I think, you know, this these take into consideration the, the additional parcel um, out on Elm Street and uh, some of the other things that were were brought up um, at the at the last meeting. So um, and then just some examples um, at the end of um, of where we are conceptually headed with with stormwater infrastructure and and just thinking right. about how that integrates into the overall design because that is a you know because we will have to manage a large amount of impervious sure. area so that's going to be a you know obviously a significant portion of the project although not as glamorous as, as yeah we hope so yeah um Chris I don't know if you want to share or sure. what um what do I need to do to do this. And I don't know whether you want to add anything to say as an sure. introduction, but I guess as an introduction, I'll just go through really quickly. Um, is there anybody either here or online that wasn't at the original meeting? No. Okay. So I'll skip most of the slides in that. Um, but I do want to show the last one, which yeah, I'll share the screen. Um, yeah, come come on up here. Larry, why yeah. yeah, we yeah, can why tilt the. Uh, bring your chairs up and just just come up with us. Yeah, we'll try to tilt the screen so you can see it a little better. Um, you know what? Just bring it back towards us a little bit, Trevor. Yeah, right there. I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. You can move that safety first. We just yeah. didn't want you to trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trip on the no. cables. <laughs> so um, real quick before uh, Jeff takes us to some of the design uh, schemes that we're going to be looking at tonight, um, I just wanted to offer up some feedback findings uh, from the survey that was sent out in the aftermath of the June 8th meeting. Uh, so some of the most frequent priorities that survey respondents had, um, the top one was the emphasis on green space. We had seven respondents say that. Uh, six wanted engagement with neighboring businesses to effectively share the space, which is also very important. Uh, five said additional parking capacity was their top priority. Um, ensuring adequate lighting came up also in five different responses. And the 
other one that I felt had enough responses to include was privacy for abutting residents uh, for respondents said that that was a top priority. Um, that was all that I had to expand on from the previous presentation. Um, does anybody have any questions on that at the moment before we get into some more specific designs? No, but thank you for taking time. Really. Uh, uh, this one. Yeah. I believe it wasn't a huge number, but it, it was about 10 to a dozen. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jeff, did you want me to open the? Uh, sure. Okay. Yep. So yeah, the design options would be the okay. first one. So um, just as a, as these are loading, um, these all are very, you know, obviously very similar themes um, just because of, of the um, essence of what it is. Um, they vary in size or capacity, I think, from 64 spaces to 79 spaces, ultimately. And so keep that in mind, you know, this is sort of the least um, the least number of spaces shown. We can obviously show less. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then also just keep in mind in the schemes that show or maximize the number of spaces, there's certainly an opportunity to consider, you know, the addition of some part, uh, you know, some parking. Take, don't build all of it now. Mm -hmm. Reserve some, reserve space for it later. Um, so this, yeah, again, the two-way entrance um, off of um, off of North Main, uh, coming into the coming into the parking lot. Um, one of the questions we do have for the market um, is how, and I don't, um, folks, I know deliveries and, and access to the back of the store in this, in this location, the trucks and you know, larger vehicle access is needed. And mm -hmm. if this driveway is sufficient enough. And so one of the ideas in this concept is that there is some you know, drive aisle, there is some access, vehicle access um, that provides access to that parking lot or those parking lots that isn't exclusively off of North Bay or from Palm Tree, um, but just a way is as a way to help internal circulation and avoid putting everybody back out on the street just to come back in. Anyway. So mm -hmm. again, that's just a consideration. Um, it's certainly a space that we could take up and you know close up with you know additional parking stall, green space, um, and sidewalk if that connection is going to be. Okay. Um, is, are, are your drawings here? Is the dark gray area private or? Yes. This is all private property. Okay. Right. So the, the light gray and. Yeah. This this dash line is really is the property line. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, um, excuse me, Jeff. We can't see the um, participants via Zoom. Cannot see the the. Uh, screen currently just shows like a file folder with oh let me fix that thank you for noticing uh let's see yeah that's a problem hmm. stop share and then start again yeah there we go Can you see that now? No. Oh, yes. Wait. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Yes, okay. now. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry about that. Thanks for the heads up. Um, oh, yeah. The, sorry. So this is a 79? This is 64 spaces. Oh, 64 yes. spaces. Yes, OK. 64. Um, this creates a sort of a larger green space. Um, behind the residential building, um, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't occupy that space with additional parking, creates some sort of outdoor amenities space, you know, picnic tables could be benches, um, mm -hmm. but just a, 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 a junction of different intersections of sidewalks and pedestrian travel really is, is really using that as a, you know, a stopping point for, um, and a way to connect, you know, the various sidewalks. Um, recognizing that we will, you know, we will include a connection to the brewery. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's ultimately a function of where that gate and how that access needs to be located. Um, 
Well, so this is the far right end of that. It's the back corner of the bed. So, you know, that, that island and this shows up in a number of the schemes, but the idea is that that could shift left or right to align with, you know, what your needs are um, mm -hmm. and work that, you know, into that, again, that pedestrian connection, um, you know, across and through the site. Um, this scheme shows a one-way entrance in off of Elm Street. Um, you know, I heard you say previously that you were envisioning that as an exit. Yep. Um, that's, you know, I think either way would would function fine. Um, it's a, it would really be a function of uh, traffic signage. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I did, you know, that we are showing, I think, in the next scheme. Um, is the notion that, um, you know, there is enough space there to get two-way traffic. And, you know, I realize this is, prob this is probably late in the conversation, um, but one of, the, one of the thoughts behind that, and if you want, um, you could go to the next scheme because I think that okay. does show, um, yeah. So the thought behind that is that, that that intersection at North Main, that entrance to North Main is a, is a busy intersection. There's a lot going on there with, um, you know, with with um, um, what's the street on the right? uh, Park Street on yep. the on the right coming in, and just it's a it's a confluence of a lot of vehicular activity that isn't inherently obvious to the you know to the to the new driver to the you know mm -hmm. to the unaware driver. Um, it's not nothing signalized. There's the market um, you know entrance and exit. There's a pedestrian exit. So the idea that, you know, it may be a safer option to encourage people to come in and off or come in or out of Elm Street just to avoid those intersections, especially if they're coming in from the east. That makes a lot of sense because the people leaving the parking lot are either going left or right, and they don't have to negotiate the why and everything that's there. They're just going to mm -hmm. get out yep. on the street and they're coming on home. You know, you get that. In, yep. You take a right simple. and off you go. Yep. So I just, again, I just want to throw that out as something to consider because how, how many parking places in this? Design? So this shows 69. And yes. again, the, the major difference is that that larger green space behind the residential building, you know, gets much smaller. Yeah. Yep. Um, did you, um, Chris, or uh, did you did you find out if how many parking places that the residents use now regularly, or that we would have to provide regularly? Sure, uh, we've been using a base number of ten, um, which was based on the number of cars that typically park in the existing space now, um, as as well as in behind the buildings that are back here. Um, Jeff, I think that's a little bit flexible but yep. 10 seems to be the mm -hmm. the number that we agreed was most sensible yeah so that light gray area is the area associated with the buildings that have right right so will they be parking in there on is that the thought well, I, I believe that was the intent is generally they they provide parking for for their residents on their own property, but we also felt like we understood like probably some people would use the parking spot as well. You Recording know, progress. If we have Justin, I'll do, I'll do. Yeah, I think we're echoing here a bit. Um, there we go. Thank you. So I think. Uh, I mean, the idea is that we assumed a few of those residents would probably have some spillover parking there, but generally they park along the side and in the back of their areas. Um, because we'd have to look at that. Yeah, yeah we have to figure it out yeah. how we're going to charge for that. But yeah, it wouldn't be free because you're, we would, we would want to make sure that there's turnover. And it's space available for a downtown. But, but they would have the option. They would have the space. They didn't want to pay for parking. They would. Yeah. Have a, they, they do have already. Option, yeah, because I don't think anyone really parks out in the grass right now. But they're you know down more in the gravel area. Some people pull in and park here and there. But it seems like there's permanent. Yeah. Vehicles there. 
I mean, so I, it might not be needed, but I mean, isn't it a requirement that residential properties yes. have to have parking yes. for their tenants? Mm -hmm. So yes. I mean, the, if they've been parking in in the grassy area, they've been doing it illegally for right. as long as they've been doing it. And obviously, the one that's the biggest issue in this yeah. one building there, which is you know completely landlocked with property line, and there is no other right. You know, there's no there's no other property to park on. Do you know how many uh, residences there are? I don't know. I believe Certainly. that is a six unit building. I thought it was six, right. Yes. And I, so I think that's where the 10 was, was coming from as a reasonable number to. Right. Because there's room for some of them on the property, but mm -hmm. there's probably going to be some overflow. Yeah. Um. So again, a lot of the same other elements, um, you know, these, um, you know, we've got some rain garden features, some bioswales, um, you know, vegetated, um, you know, swales to help manage some of the stormwater. And I'll speak to that, you know, at the very end. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it still envisions, you know, a lot of the same connections that I was referring to um, the previous scheme. Um, and then um, if you want to go to the last, before you yep. depart this, um, can you talk about this? The, it looks like they might be hand, handicapped parking spaces or or something right at the entrance of North Main and so, yep. near where the uh, the parking for the Cheslux is. Yes. So there are a number of uh, accessible spaces there now that would be um, retained. Um, there's there's both the access aisles and the parking stall itself. Um, there's also a number of EV charging stations that would remain there. Um, and then in all these, they, these envision, you know, additional EV chargers over on the eastern portion of the, or western portion of the lot. Um, and yeah, I think one question that um, I did have on my list of things to, to um, ask tonight was just confirming the, the number of, you know, overall accessible spaces that we want to consider, given the number of, you know, number of overall spaces. Um, so those, you know, those could certainly, you know, expand, but I think in all of these, um, these retain at least the accessible parking that's, um, that's in that corner. And you have picnic tables kind of near that walk over to BBC, yeah. kind of right in that south section yep. there. Yeah, that's yep. nice. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Just trying to create some sense yeah. of a moment there that, yep. you know, is, is, you know, a park space, a park let space right. in the parking lot inside that, yep. you know, allows a connection to happen between you know, some of the different businesses and sure. different destinations. So I like that. Um, and then, so the last one, um, leave this one, this one maxes out the number of spaces, at least for our schemes, it's 79 spaces overall. Um, so what did you eliminate? I'm just looking at that. I don't really see I a think huge largely difference. the rain garden space in the upper right corner goes away. I think that's the majority okay. of the spaces. Some of the islands may have gotten, uh, you know, a, a parking stall smaller. Right. Um, everything just shrunk down a little bit. Okay. Um, I tend to like the transition of the other two more than just a big parking lot. Yeah, you me know? too. The whole idea I mean, is this that, is, this is much more, yeah, this is much maximizing more parking, parking oriented, right? Vehicle oriented. I know. Um, uh, you know, there is there is some green space that we were able to, you know, carve out where that rain garden was, but it's, um, you know, it's a little bit hard to get to. It's not ideal. Um, and, you know, again, this is certainly um, sort of intensifies what we need to do with stormwater just because there isn't much right. green space to. To do a lot with so um, does this also it looks like um the elm street access point looks like you've incorporated a sidewalk and we or something did, right and we did include a sidewalk for that right for the scheme yes so that's no longer two-way or is it two-way so, well so in this scheme it shows a single you know one-way exeter with, entrance with, with a sidewalk yeah the other one just had a you know a one-way vehicle connection there's a two-way vehicle connection and this is a, a one-way with a sidewalk I'd have to think uh, it, if I would want two way or a one way with a sidewalk because mm -hmm. I, I mean we are encouraging walkability, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 
this would be a way to people feel safely. They could walk to Elm Street mm -hmm. and, and other businesses downtown. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to see what um, Hamshaw envisions for their parking for their people. I know you can't kind of build it together, but I, I mean, I don't know, maybe you can, but I just wondered how, where their lot is going to be their building. And then I, I was thinking they were going to have parking on that side of our entrance as well. But I know, I don't know where that gets tricky with property lines and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So I suppose one of the other considerations too would be, you know, just to what extent would you envision that sort of internal connection being emphasized, you know, the next to Johnny Figs that if that, you know, if you want to make that the the big connection, then, you know, yeah. that's where you'd want to put, I think a lot of the emphasis and right. draw people into there. Right. And walking and through, through the but, middle part. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause I liked your entrance even for vehicles and stuff from that lot into theirs might be beneficial, but if not, maybe it's just pedestrian. Mm -hmm. um, Can we go back to the middle one again? Middle and first. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And just before you do that, that um, that sidewalk, it looks like it goes along the, the front face of um, the parking area. Mm -hmm. And then it also looks like it has a spur out towards um, Berkshire Brewing. Is that right? Right. And that's, yeah, that's another one of those where we'd want to try to just coordinate, you know, where that, where that happens in this. Right. Game, it just, it showed right. up okay. further. Yeah, I like this one. I mean, I feel like we can get away 50, 50 spots. This is 69 spots, right? This is yeah, this 69. Is 69. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree. I don't you could almost get more green space. And I think ultimately, park. I don't know how people feel. Lily. Um, what I would do they paved an entire road with these pavers that look that mm -hmm. into the street, mm -hmm. and the grass grew up between them. And I mm -hmm. understand that there's challenges around plowing, but if each parking spot was a uh, vertical strip where grass could grow so that when you plow, you're going up and down along the vertical strip, then what you create is a green parking lot that has grass going in it. And um, I understand there must be challenges around being in New England, that is different, but I would love it if we could look at something like that, because what then you are creating is a greenscape that has cars on it. Um, what I can say is from my experience, the challenge with those and a number of um, products like that is, most of the images are from down south and not New England, as as right. you pointed out. New England does, you know, this climate does present significant challenges. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not only plowing, but the the movement of the soil, all of that. And you know, so one of the things that happens a lot is you just get differential settling, where you know, all of a sudden next year you're going to have a you know a lip. But it's, it's but the way, yeah. But I think the difference is it's all hardscape, and so it's and I I completely. You know, I was I was very naive when I first started into because that's you know I that's I wanted the same thing and we tried it many times and it just it never even the um you know that they sell the, the plastic cups that they mm -hmm. you know claim you can fill with gravel and and soil and put and put grass on them so that fire trucks can it's you know we've used them you know two dozen times and yeah. on several projects of varying scales and they never never looked like they're intended to look. Um, but did they survive the, the weather? The well, so what happens with those and and the precast pavers, um, particularly as they just move around with the winter freeze and thaw. Yeah. And so inevitably what happens is you just end up with all these corners that stick up and don't, you know, just become a hazard more than they do a, right. you know, a, a, an aesthetic attribute. Um, Yep. And, um, you know, that combined with, um, you know, the notion that, you know, um, a, a grass strip in the middle will serve every vehicle pulling in there so that the tires line up where they're supposed to is, isn't, uh, you know, isn't a reality in, yeah, in a lot of the public parking lots. Parking yeah. Yep. Or at least, I mean, that yep. is a mass slab of yep. black tarmac that you have to walk through. 
So city center when I thought that's what we were trying to avoid. Yeah. It from time. If you're, if you're looking for aesthetics and utility, they do have what exactly uh concrete patterns that can break things up and make it look like mm -hmm. stone or, or something oh, like that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yep. We, we can certainly look at um you know some alternate paving options for the for the parking stalls um mm -hmm. you know maybe there may be um that would certainly make a big difference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, something else just to avoid that heat island that you know that that you know the black absorption yeah. um of all the heat but so that can you slide up to that number one again? Sure. Just real quick, and we can come back to this as well. I'm just trying to get an idea of the um, how much parking is truly needed versus how much green space. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the pathway to BBC and the um, picnic tables down in the front, and then it um, and then it looks like there's other green space there in that connection for mm -hmm. deliveries. Um, and if it's not a connection, maybe that can be green as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if maybe like 50 spots and more green is better. Um, cause it, it would be great to really tie in this park to the common and this is 64. I know that's not that really that much less. Right. Or the extra green. Right. I feel like the, I mean, the, the green is, I, I mean, this, this is one of those schemes where, you know, if, if, you know, on the left side of the sheet there, if, yep. if you there is an absolute demand for parking and you need 10 more spaces, you know, right. eight more spaces, Down you can fit them in that green space, you know, above the residential building. Right, right. Space that could be used for that in the future. I feel like even the, um, even if you had to take a chunk out in, um, before the EV chargers and have a little bit more green space, you could here or expand the one in the beginning a little bit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I like I like this one quite a bit with maybe even more more green, less space. What do you think? I don't know. I know we're building a parking lot, but it's always nice to build yeah, a green I, park too. I have a question for Gary. Um where where would you like to see um your entrance and how big would it be and um ideally? Well are we are the top left corner. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. And, and right. Yeah, right. So they ha he has a walkway just on the edge right now. But where yeah. would you think you would want it? Uh, I think that that corner coming over maybe about between that corner and I'd say it's maybe fifty feet of we have the actual green space that right. we want to maintain, and that would be. Really Could you point that out, Gary? Yeah, I was going to ask you, you, you to your the 50 feet further. So you're saying this is the fence here? Yeah, the yeah. corner. Yeah. The shark, mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. there. So from that corner of our property over probably about 15 or 17 feet. Yeah, like this way, this is all green, and this strip is what we want to open up. Into okay, great. So it seems like then we would want to move that entrance just a little bit more to the west. It's to the west, yeah. Yeah. Is that right, Gary? Or would you leave the walkway? So somewhere, so yep. Maybe uh, putting some type of enclosure to shield the back of the well, Oh, yeah. How do the chargers work? They just pull in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe so. They're going to be running towards. Yeah. So we can have maybe some type of backdrop. Mm -hmm. like, you know, shield right. a bit. More. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, you know, it looks as though if we, if as Trevor has suggested, there's maybe we go from 64 to 57, and then we mm -hmm. take the take the four or five spots in front of the green space and incorporate a green space yeah, there. That's, that's that would, that's that would right, integrate yeah. with yours, Gary. Yeah. That's what I, I would. So right next to the EV. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love to keep for sure. Right. Yep. For sure. 
here we were talking about uh, right now it's got stockade fence, but maybe lowering that down, mm -hmm. maybe it's sort of a visual between yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. inputs it, here. inviting people in, yeah, you know, your place potentially yeah. having picnic tables there or seating or something. Do you I know, mean, we're planning on a play pond and, and some. Yeah. Pathways that need to be private seating and yeah. bringing it further down where it's going to have with the actual garden. Great. And would and so you would love to see a walk a walkway there, right? It's not just entering from the other side. You definitely want entrance from people to your facility. Right, well, we're also going to have parking in the yep. lot. Mm -hmm. So we'll be entering this way. Mm -hmm. Right, great. Just want to make sure you want you want pedestrian pathway exactly. from there into there. Perfect. Right, go right in and find it. But the parking that's going to go here. into your property is coming from Conway Street. Would yeah. they come in and exit? Uh, Street. Railroad Railroad Street. Okay, I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, just to, to respond to your comment about um, the idea that if, you know, if 58 spaces or 60 right. spaces is enough, then, yeah, I would absolutely, you know, enlarge that island. I would probably put one, you know, make this, make an island, separate this big bank. Yes. You know, Great. Love that. But, Love that. But really just try to green it up as much as we can. I agree. So, I, I mean, even 50 something parking spots will be significantly add to the to downtown. Um, yeah, but that, but if if, if, if this is 64 and we gave up four to five to make it more green and have a more attractive entrance to Berkshire Brewing, I think it's worth that. Don't yeah. A of, don't a lot of the residences actually have parking now? I think they do. I, I think they do. It's, right. it's just that the comments that I had to me were that, you know, there was not adequate for two cars if residents had two cars. But this is behind the tavern. Isn't so there a lot of parking there that's on residential property? I, I would think so. It's yeah. just that one, that one that, in the back, that, that one glamour, right? Yeah. All the others seem to have some parking. When when we actually come down to pricing and offer permit, we'll see how many people actually take it. You know, right now there's no charge. So that's why I think we're seeing parking there now. And also that creates easy. a it creates a problem when in winter when residents are parking there and they can't plow the thing because mm -hmm. so I, I, I I'm sympathetic to a landlocked building but on the other hand the that has to it has to function properly and you know so the cost of parking in there and the inconvenience it causes to the you know the system has got to be considered mm -hmm. yeah. I like this design with a little bit more green. Me too. Nice and job. just um, just so we can talk about this, I don't know the answer to this, Jeff, but the way that the EV charger, that's just drawn in there. It's not that's, a reality. It's just a place where we're right. Yeah. Because right. if it's eight charging spaces, then there are going to be eight cars need to be able to pull up and access the ports. Right. So um, that's going to stretch eight parking spaces, you mm -hmm. know, to the right heading towards north main street um and it's going to be linear rather than a, a block like that right right yeah i think those were envisioned as as the sort of meter pedestal and, and right you know, right the, you know, but those yeah you're right the, but there will the, be like stands would be at each at the head of each part of the okay wall good going down. thank you yeah um i guess the only other um i i, I think i would want john pachorik's input you know our police chief's yeah. input on one way versus two way traffic mm -hmm. and and then the other question is you know i i'm i'm still really would want a, car, a sidewalk i think because mm -hmm. we really do want people to access downtown and it's fine if it if they go if you're if you're halfway you have a choice either way but if you're at one end or the other end 
say you're at the end, you want to you want to be able to make sure that people are exiting safely. We should also reach out to Hamshaw and find out what their design looks right. like. Do they have a sidewalk already incorporated that might, you know, take over some of this too? Yeah. Or or what were they in? I I always re thought of them wanting some parking off of that entryway, but maybe not. Hmm, I was always under the impression that. The the expansion they were going to do was going to come into the lot part that they purchased. Right. But maybe, maybe, maybe not all the way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah maybe find out what their thoughts are too, and then tie it in with Gary's and figure out. So I, I think what design. we'd like Jeff mm -hmm. is um, to you to talk more to Gary yep. and his plans. So yep. his plans are integrated better mm -hmm. and, um, and we have some options and then, uh, and then reach out to Henshaw and um, see what they're doing. And maybe we can integrate with them a little bit better. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if and they're, the, if they're that, doing that. And that yeah. we are just in general comments, but more green than numbers. Lily. Any chance of a solar canopy on some nope. very naked part nope. over there that nope. prevents? Be a hard no. It's a hard no. Unfortunately, those are very <laughs> expensive money. and usually cost money. prohibitive for municipalities um, with lots money. like this one. We have a big solar canopy going up at the transfer station. Yeah, just off the shelter. Yeah, and I hear you. It's just too much money. Wow. Yeah, you know, we're um, maybe we can talk to the uh, climate change secretary who visited uh, the digester today and say hey you got a million dollars for us to put up a solar canopy here there and, you go. Uh, and see if we can squeeze some money out of the governor i think the biggest thing is um lily is that if we focus in on the um municipal campus is having the canopies and and we try to get that there i think it's our responsibility to the generations that follow us bring it up at every single opportunity i i'm not disagreeing sure. i you want this that. parking lot I, by the I, fall i agree with that i i'm always looking at budget as well I, what can we what can we afford yeah yep. i know For sure i mean we're gonna try to do it with the money we have mm -hmm. Fifty-four. Yep. And and what about this connection to? Yeah. This, this, I, 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 I think I would want I would want access there because again, people will want the shortest shortcut. Sure. So they would be cutting across to anyway. Yeah. We just we should, so who owns that? Is it? Uh, it, it's the two brothers that own that with Cheswick. So we just really need to get in yep. touch with them and say, is does this make sense? Or that should this be only pedestrian? I know that through Johnny Figs. He was hoping to have pedestrian mm -hmm. yeah. access out onto Elm as well. Um, yeah, and it was. I just don't know whether they, you know, would they, would, whether they would value right parking spaces there more than a drive by. More than yes, yeah, so exactly. But we can. Yep. Yeah, and the pluses and minuses of two way traffic in both. Yep. I I personally think that from a just logic standpoint, in from North Main Street out on Elm Street is very simple. You're not going to have traffic accidents created by confused people. Um, but if the chief says, from, you know, or you know, that this makes sense to have mm -hmm. two-way traffic in both places, I could be swayed. Well, but. no, actually, it was John's idea to have the one way in yeah. and out. He felt it was safer. It is, uh, in my estimation, <laughs> you know, but, but if everybody what... knows traffic flows in one direction, mm -hmm. Yep. you know. And then that way we could have a, a sidewalk, but I, I still think it's worth to talk to John and see, you know, what really the difference is in two way versus one way. But my, when I spoke to him earlier, um, he said the one way, of course, was more safe. Mm -hmm. 
So, sure. So that's 12 feet wide. So, I mean, it's generally wide enough. Yeah. So if, an, if it were one way and it was going out Elm Street, you were saying that an emergency vehicle might want to access it from Elm Street, even though they're going in the wrong traffic direction. I, I think accessing the main makes so much more sense because of that wide situation there. People are coming down. That is the main intersection in town. And to now have people have to negotiate entering the parking lot is just one more hazard mm -hmm. of crossing that that traffic. And if you're ever there when school lets out or whatever, I mean it just lines up and it would be a heck of a lot easier getting out than it would be getting in. So what you're saying is like at 2 30 or 3 o'clock when when we have the traffic jam in Deerfield, South Deerfield it would be easier to get out of the parking lot into the line of cars that are parked in front of that than it would be for a car going in and creating a space I, I for another. Agree, I agree. Okay. I also feel that if we're looking to bring new people into town, mm -hmm. that to have them negotiate that as high welcome to Deerfield, mm -hmm. it's going to be, you know, where, where do I go? Do I steer to the right? Do I make that left? I could I could go either way as far as which one is the entrance and which one's the exit. I can envision a time when somebody's exiting from onto North Main Street, don't want to deal with the Y. They want to go left. They're going to do what they want to do. <laughs> and then somebody's going to come from Park. It'll be like Mill Village and, and Route 5. Um, but I can certainly... I'm interested in seeing what Chief Pachorik has to say about it because he's yeah. probably got more experience with traffic than I do. I do. I am seeing the entrance, though. If you're coming to Deerfield, you might want to just, instead of dealing with downtown, mm -hmm. just turn right in and park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good thought. I, mean, I know. Had, well, I thought of it looping the other mm -hmm. way this whole time, but now. Or if you had a, no, an entrance and an exit on Elm Street and you just closed off the other, <laughs> then you don't have that problem. No. Let's not do that. It looks like we have a hand raised over Zoom. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, I'm sorry. Wonderful. Can you see who it hey, is? Bill. Uh, William. Sure. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. yes. Great. Um, so William Jura, 9 Conway Street. Uh, I just want to continue to uh, add my support for the project. It looks good. I, as much green space as possible. Is, is great. I, I do have a question about uh, water runoff, you know, mm -hmm. and just watching all the rain that we, we seem to be getting recently. What's, will there be, what, what, how will water flow? Will it go, which, will there be sewers built into this? And then also lighting is another important part. And um, so I just want to um, understand what, what that will look like. And, um, you know, as, as, and again, I just want to reiterate, I, I'm in support of as much of the seating space as possible. It'd be great to see partnerships where businesses could offer uh, outdoor dining or, 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 or those type of options uh, for the community. I think that'd be a really attractive sell for the town. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Do you want to, Jeff, do you want to address some of the stormwater? Sure. I yeah. So, um, yeah, and this would be a good segue into the, sort of the last slide, but um, yeah, generally, you know, obviously the the schemes that show more green space, we're able to handle a little bit more uh, stormwater on the surface, at least through some, you know, other more um, low impact development, you know, techniques. So, you know, we can we can utilize a rain garden to capture a lot of the runoff and treat runoff from, you know, sort of the north side of the parking lot. We envision, um, you know, a series of bioswales to the extent that we can fit those in. Um, with the with the sidewalk and the parking um, to treat um, a lot of the runoff from from that portion, and we'll have a number of you know we'll we'll try to utilize some some tree boxes or similar versions of those rain gardens to the extent we can. Um, 
I think that um, ultimately just because of the size of um, area that we've got to deal with, there's going to be some subsurface system right. just to manage that, to attenuate those larger storm events. Yep. Um, you know, there's just no, you know, there's no way that those elements alone have enough volume to, to store, you know, water and, and storms like we just had. So right. what we anticipate is that we'll try to utilize these types of elements as much as possible as um, as a way to clean the storm water mm -hmm. because we'll, we'll have to clean the storm water and then we'll have to store it um, for the larger storms storing it's easy um, relatively um, you know once you once you clean it and I think you know trying to clean it through a, a, a host of you know green infrastructure um, elements is certainly the way that we'd like to head um, and, and Chris if you want to pull up that one other slide that I had in there sure um, it is um, just some examples of sort of our, um, yeah, that. Yeah. So this is just generally some ideas of what, you know, conceptually what we're thinking about um, using for, for some of the management and, um, you know, for these, for these um, schemes that have got more green in them. So the tree filters, the bioswales, and the left side of this uh, mm -hmm. sheet, you know, are, are sort of a long linear trench, but that it allows the sheet flow, capture a lot of sheet flow. Um, we can we can clean it through a series of you know uh, uh, media and plants, and um, that will discharge again to some subsurface system to manage the larger um, you know larger storms. Um, the the everyday sort of you know afternoon showers, those will probably manage all of the water you know by themselves. Um, and then where we have some larger landscape areas, some um, larger green space, we'll certainly try to employ as many of these rain garden um, type features that, you know, allow a little bit more volume to be stored, but also provide a landscape element. Um, you know, we will select a series of trees and plant things that are appropriate and just, you know, they look nice and the landscape aren't just a, a detention basin, um, yeah. but they look like they're meant to be, um, you know, they, they, they are a, a, a landscape uh, attribute. So. Great. Um, we we'll, Jeff, we do have um, from the Con Franklin Conservation District. We have small grant to work with this to yep. do native planting because yep. um, not not only native planting um, is good for you know has more root retention mm -hmm. and filtration, but also from a maintenance point of view is much more attractive, and that also f um, works in with our pollinator grant that we have with the FERCOG on so. Uh, Owen Wormser and the FERCOG would be consulting on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for plantings and um, ease of maintenance and Gary, um, the conservation district too would have um, Owen Wormser available to you if you were interested for consulting, um, no charge. I mean, it would be part of the grant so that you could integrate plantings that would be low maintenance and pollinator friendly native stuff that would not mean a lot of yeah that would not mean need a lot of maintenance yes yeah i i i will make sure megan our um i'm chair of the conservation district so i'll make sure megan our t administrative assistant gets in touch with you so we can set up consulting if you want so did we have a consensus that we were thinking like trevor suggested a few fewer spaces like maybe if you came up with a design that's like mm -hmm. 54 spaces with the green in that long stretch yep um and then some more space in front of gary's entrance to widen that out yeah yeah and uh it sounds you know. great uh, yeah i think we all agree that that would be right. the nicest thing and i think that did leave as much green space around that landlocked you know where where that mm -hmm. one client one resident was really concerned about the space and i think it would give us you know in the future you can always take it over and put parking if you need it but i think the more we can retain that green space around that that one i think resident. i think we all want to see yeah. more green space for sure and yeah for um, so like the first design and even if we end yeah. up with a closing off the access from north main or whatever mm -hmm. and having a entrance and exit on elm That'll create its own issues, but it it would be more manageable in some reg regards. Sure. Um, but uh, open, yeah, we could still have nice green space at the back there. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Super. Thank you. But like I said, we're we're more interested in, in long-term sustainability mm -hmm. of the these spots. So with low maintenance, and that was why, you know, buying the native plants, it it's we're going to have a pollinator plan through the FERCOG for the whole town and our campus and all that, but it it's also using the native plants that will they'll be easier to maintain, mm -hmm. and and that you won't have die die back and all that. Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. No. The native. <laughs> yeah. If we plant native plants and they'll they'll thrive in the environment and mm -hmm. um and they won't be a a, a huge maintenance issue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Does really anybody work. have any other questions on this? I, you know, yeah. William, I know you asked about lighting. We'll yes, that but sure. that's not. Do you, right, you have oh, no, I just in terms of next steps and you know the, yeah. the other things coming. We we haven't quite list. gotten yes. that yeah. far yet. Yeah. So I mean, we're certainly going to use you know dark sky, you know, low uh, full cutoff fixtures and you know LED yep. um, energy efficient fixtures. Um, you know, I think it's really going to be a matter of fixture selection and getting something that's appropriate for. You know, right. for downtown and um, yep. works with some of the other. You know, we'll want to look at um, you know bench selection and just yeah, how, common, how those tie exactly. in with right. You know, bingo. That's exactly. Right. We want that's continuity and consistency yep. of the of reaching out to the common that's and then the common, to the right. to the municipal plan. Yep. Our, our municipal campus. So, um, but what's really important it's too is that hand raised. Oh, that we also have um, the ability to you know to 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 time the lights mm -hmm. so you know like we have dark darker period but not but we have no safety issues sure there's still plenty of safety lighting david go ahead how are you david is also on the, um our franklin conservation district board with me well so david. <laughs> david thank you hi carolyn good evening everybody hi i'm dave pomerance and um, i'm working with uh Casey and Chris in the town with Rivermore Energy and with John Tortolot, who's also on the call that has a comment he'd like to make. But I just want a, a couple of quick points. Um, I used to be the facilities management director in Northampton and we grappled with everything you're grappling with here on a numerous parking lot projects. And you are definitely on the right track uh, as far as maximizing your green space Sidewalks for walking safety in the parking lot is key. Uh, yes, it adds a little more maintenance work during the winter, but safety is, is a factor. Um, just a couple of points. Keep in mind that you'll probably end up using the lot for off-street parking to get cars off of Elm Street in the core downtown so you can plow during the winter. So that's something to consider. Uh, as part of your winter notification, but th it's a great spot to get cars off the street so the DPW can plow. Thank um, the To Jeff's points about maximizing uh, surface and stormwater capacity um, after last week's storms, it's obvious the direction we're heading in right now. So anything you can do to maximize collection, storage, and then distribution. Um, Sure, it does cost a little bit more money to put these features into a project, but think about the alternatives of flooded downtown basements and businesses or damaged and destroyed streets from the volume of water that will go coursing through as, as these storms get stronger and stronger. Um, think about bike racks, uh, at least one, maybe two um, in, in your uh, site plan work. And um, to Carolyn's point about lighting, um, we did a parking lot in Northampton where we put new LED fixtures in on new poles with dimmer capacity. Oh. So after 11 or 11 or 12 o'clock at night, I can't remember, the lights would dim uh, by, I forget what the percentage was. So you still had public safety needs being met, but for surrounding apartment buildings in the downtown, um, it was a much uh, lower level of lighting during the core of the, the deep night. Uh, so dim, dimming is something to consider as well. Um, just, just a couple of quick points. Um, John, do you want to talk about federal grants and capacity with that for a second? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, David. Hey, John. Thank you, David. Uh, just briefly, um, it is uh, perspective at this point, the federal grant, and um, Chris Nolan, who's 
there with you can can speak about it further. But we are hoping over the next um, few months to hear back from the federal government on the the grant application that um, Chris submitted under the um, President Biden and the administration's um, CFI grant, which is um, basically clean energy fueling infrastructure. It would help to fund the, the green infrastructure in the project. That's a priority. Um, it would also help to fund the bike pathways and bike rack that David Pomerantz just spoke about, mm -hmm. as well as the, um, the new entrance and upgrading the curb cuts and the sidewalks around the, the interior of the project um, as well. So it could be very material. It's it's um it's a competitive grant. We did you know we did a really good job I think on the grant application and even if the town received a percentage of it I think it would be material. So I want I wanted to put that on your radar as a as a potential um, outcome here and obviously we also fund um, a good percentage of the EV charging. Thank you. Thank you. I had a question for David and. Um, if you don't um, have the answer, that's fine. Um, in your in your work, um, did you ever have an instance where, like, a parking lot had permeable pavement where the parking slots are, and then um, the regular pavement in the high traffic area? Uh, and if so, did it work? Did it not work? Um, Do you understand my question? Yes. Yes. So we never did a parking lot that had pervious pavement um, because of storm water requirements and looking at green infrastructure. We went that route as opposed to the per pervious, pervious pavement. Um, one potential option that you've got, um, and this gets to the point that I think somebody was talking about earlier this evening about interspersing green spaces amongst the parking spaces themselves. Um, if you look at those designs that Jeff presented this evening, at the end of e at the aisle where the sidewalk and the parking lot sort of curves, those are called aisle corners, um, you could install interspersed amongst parking spaces every once in a while, so you'd lose a couple of more spaces. They're sort of U-shaped concrete um, spaces that are filled with uh, permeable soil and let's do, let's do pollinators. We did those in Northampton too. So you intersperse that to increase your, your water retention capacity amongst the actual parking spaces. Um, so just another option, but no, Tim, we did not do uh, pervious payment uh, in any of the parking lot projects in Northampton. And the second question, um, you mentioned uh, variable intensity lighting, and one of our energy committee folks pointed out that the when you get into variable voltages going into a fixture, it gets really expensive as opposed to having a fixture that has like a three-way switch on it where it's, you know, 50, 100, 150, like the light bulbs where in the middle of the night you go to the lowest setting um, but it's not variable and it doesn't have the associated electrical issues. And when the, when the lighting head breaks, you got to replace a very expensive fixture as opposed to, mm -hmm. you know, so did you have any experience with that? I mean, um, it has a lot more money than we do. <laughs> right. Well, you'll end up doing, when you work with a lighting supplier, who's going to work with the contractor on the parking lot, you're going to do what's called a photometric assessment. So you're right. going to look at where you need, you know, minimum and maximum lighting. So not every fixture is going to be, so let's say, top shelf as far as the most complex. You may just have some basic fixtures on the peripheral of the lot. Um, and based on the size of this lot, I don't think we're looking at an extensive number of poles and poles and fixtures. Right. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not huge, actually. No. No. And Tim, just yeah, you're. Um, point out, we, we've worked with, uh, we've done a couple of projects um, that have included parking lot lighting, site lighting that do, they have, the, the bulbs have two settings. There's a, you know, 100%, 50%. And there's a, there's a switch that, you know, a timer that at dusk, you know, 10 o'clock, it turns to 50% and then at, it comes back on and it's starting to become a much more 
common, you know, um, feature on lights just because of the ease with LEDs. The LEDs make it mm -hmm. incredibly easy. Yep. Lily. One is for that is um, my sister lives in Florence. And I was walking around the neighborhood, and there was a pervious sidewalk that has been there for a couple of years now. And I was wondering if you know, um, it has that been successful or what? I know they were doing it as an experiment because I was thinking about the pathways could be pervious if they if they don't have the same kind of thing. David, do you know what the experience has been on that? No, I I don't know about that one, Carolyn. Okay. Um, well, we could ask about that. Yeah, that, and it's in a neighborhood in Florence. I could probably find it if I were robot. But the other thing is on the light bulbs. I have the light bulbs that I just take my little app out and they say 0%, 5%, whatever. I mean, all I do is tell the light bulb what to do. So, I mean, it, it doesn't have, it's just on standard output wiring. Yeah, it, 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 I'm just pointing out that it can be problematic because you, you get an industrial light fixture solution and it's a thousand bucks as opposed to, you know, something that's internet capable and, you know, yeah. So obviously Jeff will con yeah, consider we'll, all those today. issues. Yep. Jeff, do you feel like you have um, enough input uh, to answer the next step? Yeah, I think certainly to take it to the next yeah, to the next okay. level, I do. I think, you know, there's still, we'll have some, you know, again, amenity, some fixture questions and, mm -hmm. and selection to do. But I think, um, I think I have enough to, um, enough questions answered to, to come up with a, you know, sort of a final scheme. And then it'll be a matter of pick, uh, picking. Would a, would a month be about right for you? Yeah. Or so yep. we're, um, looking at the 14th or the 21st, Chris, do you know if there's anything scheduled on the 14th or the 21st? The 14th or the 21st of August? Not that I know of at the moment. Um, Gary, do you, um, will you be available or, and Lily, anybody that is here? So August 21st? Okay. Lily, are you going to be here? Okay. And, and you? Okay. Um, William, are you avail available on the um, 21st for our next meeting? Uh, just a moment. I will put it in. At what time will that be at? Uh, six o'clock, same time. I'll go ahead and put that in the calendar. Yeah, we'll do same place, same time that we've done this one in the past one. Yeah. Um, and at Everyone knows you can purchase some wonderful lemonade right across the street before the meeting. Yes. Delicious, delicious <laughs> <Yes>. lemonade. <laughs> um, so we'll do we'll we'll come and and try to um do the next stage on the twenty first, right at six o'clock. Okay. And um, this is hopefully our final meeting. Make make all the decisions because yep. then we can. And get an RFP. Do you help us with that? Or yeah, we yeah. Well, yeah. So we'll dive right into the construction drawings and and. Yeah. Okay. Sure Perfect. Right. Yeah. That will be exciting. Chris, we just um, set a meeting for the twenty first, August twenty first at six p.m., and then that will be our final meeting for input, and then we'll go right into construction drawings for yeah. RFP. Okay. Great. That's Super. very exciting. Thank yes. you, everyone, for attending. Yeah. Thanks for all your input. Yes. Thank, thank you. you for all thank you all. Comments. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Gary, thank you. Good pleasure. Thank you for thank all your time. Motion to adjourn. Where they put it on the sidewalk around the cities in Florence on Main Street. Interesting. You know what? We'll, we'll have to work. I, I know I use this all the time, but honestly, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, you know, I've been going to the meetings there for since 2005 and what they've done there in their city is so amazing um so i i want south deerfield to look like portsmouth yeah it's it's beautiful won't be long the ocean will be right here I, <laughs> that's true unfortunately oh my god i just um before we adjourn i just want to say deerfield hey, thanks, has been thank you lily deerfield has been extremely extremely lucky 
that we have such a responsive legislative delegation. The governor was here today, Lieutenant Governor, the Energy Secretary, the Agricultural Commissioner. We had just uh, the governor's representative, Joe Comerford and Nellie Blay have been fabulous. People, people are really reaching out and, and really taking time to listen to how stressed that our farmers are yeah. with the loss. They they are looking at our um, municipal losses. I mean, we didn't, we're very lucky, nothing really hugely serious, but you know, it's just all these little culverts and you know, it's just a lot of money and it, it trying to come up with creative ways to cover it and, and be thinking about it and having the support of all our elected officials, it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, and um, I think I've sweated enough at cornfields <laughs> <laughs> in the last last week or so. But I, I have to say, I'm I'm so impressed that we have caring people. And Tim, do you yeah. want to talk about the energy secretary? A little well, bit? well, actually, it was. It turns out she's the climate uh, change chief, a newly uh, realized yep. Melissa Hoffer. And we did, we toured the digester out at the Melnick farm and uh, and uh, talked with uh, the company and and how they're creating jobs and you know utilizing um, farm byproducts to make electricity and uh, also to lessen the smell in the community. So uh, uh, they were very pleased with the. Uh, you know, with the tour and uh, the fact that we have somebody who's actually focused on climate change issues. So it's great. Yeah, that was great. And Gobi um, was here. She's a new rural uh, director of rural affairs. She was has been a fantastic um, senator from the central part of Massachusetts. So I'm actually really sad that she's leaving because she's been one of our biggest supporters of rural issues. But she is now the new director, and it's fabulous. So. Yeah. yeah, she was there today too. Seat with the governor. We actually have a, one of Ann Gobi's. Well, she's a, Michael. Uh, Michael Brady is a senator from out east, and he came out to tour the facility. So that right. was that was good. Um, and uh, you know, he has some farm communities in his district. So good stuff. Terrific. Okay, motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor. Daniel G.I. Carolyn Daniel I. Carolyn Ness I. <laughs>